Good morning. So, um, a creative company, um, how it develops, how it sustains for a long time is, is my theme. Um, sort of what the, sto what the story is from then to now, briefly, and then to try and address the how and the why that is possible. Um, so I will start, as everyone should do, uh, with a showreel. Uh, so we, we, we know what we're talking about. So here we go. Are we sitting comfortably? Hmm? Mm Thank you. So there we go, a uh, bit of a whirlwind tour. Um, so Ardman today, the company today, we've, we've been in business 43 years now, full time. Um, we've made eight and released eight feature films, um, TV series notably Shaun the Sheep, we're on to series six. We've done Christmas specials, we've done music videos, notably Sledgehammer, um, games, um, interactive stuff, charity stuff, um, four Academy Awards, and a further six or seven Academy nominations. Hundreds of commercials. So, as he says here, we're no mugs. Um, so, so, where did we start? Um, so, there were, uh, I met my business partner, Dave Sproxton, when we were at school together. And that is, let's be honest, 53 years ago I met him uh, and sat down next to him in class. Um, and so, and, and then t we, we were never trained for this in any way. We started animation as a hobby, uh, and then we went to university, and I studied English, and he studied geography. Uh, so we had no vocational training, no business training. We were, honestly, we were, we were hobbyists, and it that turned into a career. Um, and I, so my endeavour is to try and draw a line between those two schoolboys and the mighty, the mighty empire there is today. And I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a line, but this is a slight line, slightly backwards actually. So uh, this is a few years ago now. What is it, 2011? Uh, and so a big, a big, huge crew. And while that crew was making that feature film, there was another crew in another building. So we have two sites now. So all those people, that was the, that was the whole Ardman team, uh, go back a few years, and this was the entire team in about n the late 90s when we just set off to make Chicken Run. And this was the entire team a few years before that when we moved to our fancy um, property by the docks side. Here we are on holiday together. <laughs> Here we are in the cinema. Is the entire team. Here's the entire team in the back garden of our studio in uh, Clifton in Bristol. 
and here's the entire team in 1983. Uh, so me and Dave, and on the left is um, Richard Starzak. And so that was the whole team. And here are the founders working on our first film uh, in uh, Dave's parents' back bedroom. So uh, that's where we came from. And as you see, we, we, we've got this large, huge number of people. And then here we are. This is not a very good picture, but it celebrates the fact that last year we... I never know what word to use, what verb. We transitioned, we moved the company into employee ownership. So from those two schoolboys to a merry celebration of employee ownership. And so how do we get from here to there? Well, the differences couldn't be clearer. It's, um, and do I, do I still identify with the bloke on the upper left there? And yeah, I, I, I do, is the, short, is the short answer. I absolutely do. Um, you know, I have today sort of 220 partners rather than one. Uh, I've distinctly uh, aged and and uh, slipped into monochrome, but um, uh, but I'm much w I'm much wiser, obviously. I don't animate anymore. In that picture, I was doing all the animation. Um, I don't do that anymore, and I don't direct uh, anymore. At least I won't direct. I won't direct another feature film, and that is purely because. I can't, it's, I can't take the pace. Um, it's because it's such hard work to direct a feature film. And as, as a director, you become weirdly a slave. You know, everyone's working for you, it's wonderful, but you, you don't get any time to yourself. And I've become lazy. Uh, and I'm happy to say that, and, and I, my, my current plan is to enjoy life as well as, as run, running the company. Um, so, if you asked me in the old picture, the first black and white picture, I would have said, yes, well, the company's mine. Me, me and Dave run it together. Uh, I've completely ab abandoned that claim to running the company because Dave Sproxton took it over, and now that he's retired, shock horror, as of last Wednesday, there's a new MD and there's a, there's a board to run the company, and I don't make any claim to that. I, I advise, I affect, but I certainly don't run the company anymore. Um, compared to the guy in black and white, there's a huge amount more hassle than there used to be back then. And I attend more meetings. I mean, obviously, I attended no meetings back then, because except we just, just talked to Dave. But uh, <laughs> I, 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 attend, I attend meetings, and I, I, I zone out. I really do zone out. It, and, and, you know, yes, it's true. I, I, when we, when we go through the finances, you know, the company finances with the FD, you know, I, I nod wisely. I, I turn to the right page, you know, I, I, I'm good at that. But do I understand it? No. I do not, I do not understand it. I, I really don't. You know. When he talks about cash, I don't know what he means, honestly. I don't know what he means. I, I accept it's important, that's clear. But I, is, well, is, there, is there a vault somewhere? I have absolutely no idea. But I still love, as I did then, I still love being involved in stories and storytelling. And I love the companionship and the company of creative people. And that's hugely important to me. That strange character is the original Ardman for which the company name comes. So what was there in 76, which is still there today, I am... Uh, optimism, I think, uh, a love of art, a love of storytelling, a love of communication, a love of the medium, a sense of play, which I think is hugely important, and an awareness of the privilege and the uh, the power, which comes from uh, working in the, in the communication business. What were we thinking of when we started? When we started out, and I think, I was trying to think, well, survival, I think, you know, there we were. We started professionally in 76. We, the two of us moved into a room above a shop. And what was our motives then? Survival, in the sense of business, just we wanted to keep going. And, um, and, and actually practical survival, literally to have uh, food on the table, because there was no money at all to start with. And thank God for the welfare state, because the first six months, we were totally subsidized by, by, um, by, by uh, being on the dole for the first six months before any money started to come in. It's interesting to think that, that we wouldn't have got started without that leg up. And the 
the desire just to keep going. And I'm, you know, I'm being deliberately sort of reductive about it. But yes, why why do you do why do you do it? Um, not particularly, I think, because we desperately loved animation. Not particularly, I think, because we had a dream or a vision. No, simply the the desire to keep going. Uh, and why and why would you do that? Because. Um, because of ambition, yes, and because of fear, uh, because of inertia, um, and because of optimism. A strange group of words to put together, but for why, for why a company would keep going. Not, as I say, because it was some long cherished dream, uh, and not particularly a desire for wealth either, I don't think. Uh, I completely understand that today the world is so different. I, I know this. I, I, I know. F I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm talking about it. it. Seems like another era, another century. Oh, by Jove, it was. Oh, another millennium. By Jove, it was. Um, but uh, I understand that, that now a young person would look at YouTube and and see how how you can get vast numbers of um, viewers and make large amounts of money um, by being smart, and it's quite easy. And I can see why that would be a, a goal that people would set their their sights on. Um, but that didn't apply back, back when we started. Um, there weren't those options at all. There, wasn't, there did not seem to be, I think, uh, any kind of shortcut to being successful in the business, which is to say that we would look at whatever animation we could see, um, which might be a Disney film or it might be a TV commercial, and we would say, and we would say wow, that's really difficult to do that. That, that picture there, I put it up, I think, because that is old school, very old school drawn animation. The same style, the same technique that all animation was done back in the 70s. You know, and uh, that rather obviously poor drawing it just shows how far we had to go and how uncommercial we were. So what were we aiming for then? If, um, and that is an interesting question as well, because in 76, could we have dreamt of the Arban studio as it is today? Uh, absolutely not. I don't, I don't think we did for a minute, um, uh, for, various, for various reasons. Um, like, what was there? There was, there was American studios. There was, there was Disney, and there was Hanna-Barbera, uh, in Britain, there was a studio called Harrison Batcher that was just tailing away and disappearing. Um, but a big, substantial studio employing a lot of people didn't really, ex didn't really exist. We could see that there was work in TV commercials, lucrative work, that was obvious to us. Uh, we could see there was work in children's TV. We could see there was work in educational, and that was kind of it. And we and that those were the few little platforms where we where we strove uh, to get a foothold. Of them all, the one that looked sort of halfway feasible was was kids TV because we could see on TV films made by um, by by Filmfare, Bure and Hardwick, small films, and they were making puppet animation for kids, and we were making, we moved on from now, we were making puppet animation too. So that was, um, that was something we could aim towards and aspire towards, and indeed that's, that's how it went. Um, what is the next one? That's how it went. So we worked up towards that, towards a children's TV series, and we, we were lucky. We had, we had big breaks. And I, I think this is it's so obviously important, um, and yet, is it helpful to talk about when I talk to, to young people that are setting up a studio, I say, oh, we were lucky we had big breaks. I don't think that's a terribly helpful thing to say, but it's a fact of life. It's a fact of life. Without them, I don't know where we'd be. Um, the first one was when we were still at school. We sold our first, uh, first piece of work to the BBC, to a thing called Vision On. Um, and, you know, that's, that's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, now, to, well, uh, now um, to be 17 and have your work viewed by millions online is perfectly normal. That's, that, that's, everyone does that. But back then, it was extremely unusual. And you, yes, we got big, big viewing figures. Um, so that was how we got started. Um, and then that program, Vision On, uh, 
it stopped, which seemed to be something of, of a disaster to us because that was the only gig we had. Uh, the BBC cancelled it. Oh dear, there's the end of our career, we thought. But then luckily they decided to come back with a, with a new series, which was um, the Morph series, uh, which was Take Heart with Tony Hart introducing it. And for Take Heart, we created Morph. So now, we, now that proved to be a big step because now we had a character that had legs, that had longevity, a character. Um, I see, I'm way behind time, aren't I? Yes. OK. Uh, then, um, hurrying through <laughs> very much, uh, Channel 4 started at exactly the right moment for us. Thank you, Channel 4. Um, advertising came along at just the right moment for us. And uh, then this bloke joined, he, well, he, not him, uh, this bloke joined us, bringing with him these characters. And that was Nick Park. Uh, who joined us in 83. And it's so obvious and clear to me that so much of our success is down to him. Now, I'm going to absolutely rush ahead because I know I have got no time. So I've made a great list here, a great list, which I should now work through, of, uh, OK, I've talked to you in a very uh, garbled fashion about how we got from there to here, missing out many details. But why, how? More interesting. So. I think shared objectives between me and Dave Sproxton is absolutely key to it. As people, we're completely different. Our skill set is completely different, and our personalities are completely different. But by, by good fortune or something else, we feel the same way about the important things, the important things. And, and those are, um, well, I'll come on to those, I guess. I mean, the first one, uh, a sort of instinctive socialist agenda. Um, which is true. Um, you know, it's just it's, it's our it's the way we were brought up. It's the culture we were brought up in. Our parents and so on. Uh, an instinctive uh, suspicion about capitalism and the belief in the, the the general the general good of the in our case of the studio. An explicitly creative agenda. You know, I, I phrased it the other day. I spoke to the, the staff and I said. Um, I said simply, uh, we're in the business of making stories, not making money, and that's true. The creative choices largely uh, win, trump everything else. Though we are, though we do have, I, I've put in brackets, a very cautious financial director as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, other secret of our success, Nick Park, who's up there. The pursuit of excellence. Um, the film that's just out now, Farmageddon. Uh, by God, we sweated over that, you know. I mean, every, everyone, everyone did a, a team, a team of uh, everyone that worked on it. But there were a team, of, a dozen of us who were in charge of what ended up on the screen. And by God, we we worked really hard at that. A constant dynamic tension between change and tradition. So it's, it's in. Oh. There we go. There's, there's tradition for you. We know how important those characters are to us. We also know how crucial it is to do and create new things the whole time. Uh, on the business level, a diversity of platforms. So we, so we do, as I've said at the start, we do movies, series, ads, education, shorts, music videos, games, all these things. Uh, VR, whenever it comes along, we are interested and we're looking to take advantage of all the opportunities. And the company's always done all those things, which is just played play terribly well for us. Uh, we also have, especially my partner Dave, uh, a great enthusiasm and belief in the technical side of the company. Um, and so technical innovation is very important. It's very important. Uh, um, and also, I would say, uh, in truth, a natural conservatism with a very small c. Having said we have a socialist agenda, you know, we are we are we're a careful bunch. You know, we're not if we're not mavericks. I mean, I I, I kind of wish we were. I'd, lo I'd love to be a maverick and do crazy, outrageous, audacious stuff. But actually, our instincts are quite cautious, uh, and the firm belief that work should be enjoyable for the people that do it, that they're actually working in the company day by day should be an enjoyable experience. Uh, we also have, I, <laughs> I've written down, rigorous and occasionally ridiculous to my taste, traditional management. So we do, you know, I, I accept that when you get to be 220 people big, you have to do all the grown-up stuff. 
you know, uh, I, I, it doesn't interest me very much. In fact, it annoys me. And the thing that annoys me most is the internal recharges. You know, we do internal recharges. Ridiculous, absolutely absurd thing. And, and, uh, but I've completely given up on that, you know, because all the others think it's a good idea, and so I politely let, <laughs> let them have their way on that. Um, and I would say also within the company, um, a certain lack of... A certain lack of ego, and actually Nick is, despite this flashy picture, I mean Nick is, <laughs> Nick is a classic example. He's a very sort of, uh, you know, understated guy. You wouldn't think it, would you? But he really, he really is, and has, and has virtually no ego at all. And there's very little. We don't encourage, we don't encourage competition internally, particularly. Uh, and ambition is a funny word, you know. Amb ambition. It's obviously essential, I think, and yet, we, and yet it can be ugly and, and um, you know, creative ambition, wonderful, personal ambition, not so attractive. Uh, and a long-termism. A long -termism. Now, okay, just checking, just checking. <laughs> okay, I've, I've rushed to a considerable list there. I think I'll... F there we go, there we go, back to those guys again. Oh, yeah, I was going to, I was going to say, I was going to say that then, in, in that picture, there were three people who were entirely involved in the a creative process. And now I've got to be very careful about this. But, but there, who knows? I, I, I should have counted, shouldn't I? I should tell you exactly. But I should think probably, you know, two-thirds of those people are involved in the creative process and one-third are in support services of various sorts. Uh, and that group, the group down at, the, at our headquarters building, perhaps half of those are involved in, in support services. Um, but this group that are actually filmmaking, they're only sort of 10% are involved in the support services and the other 90% are all makers and doers. But certainly, generally speaking, the, certainly compared to the, to the first days, the, uh, that ratio has, has changed a lot. The last thing I'll mention, I think, quickly then, is employee ownership that we decided to do. And um, people ask, people say, why did you do that, Peter? They say, why have you gone for employee ownership? And I think there's a there's a, a fa there's an easy answer, which and it's the easy, easy answer that I gave to the staff when we announced it. And it sounds a bit twee, but it's so true. The simple reason we did it is because we loved the company, and we loved the company because we created the company, and it's like our baby. And what are you going to do? You've got you got you've you've got your baby grown up to be an intelligent adult, and what are you going to do, sell him into slavery? I don't think so, <laughs> you know, honestly. Um, you know, we never wanted the company to be bought and sold as a thing. You know, it's not a thing, it's, it's, a, it's a, to me, I will even dare use the word family, although I know it's pretty non-PC, but it's, it's, it's an organic group of people who do something great that I care about, and, and those individuals have done so much for us over the years, and so it's right that they should end up owning the company rather than some nameless bunch of people with, with extremely deep pockets. So I think that's probably enough for me. Sorry, it's rather rushed. I'm sorry, but there we go. Let's keynote for you.